As we begin this morning, we're going to start out like we did last week with a song um, on the screen as Jerry plays the song. And I'd like you to please either sing along or just follow the words and let the words speak to your heart uh, as we begin. So follow along as we begin our service with Day by Day. Day by day, and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. What a wonderful thought that we can remember this and think about that. Um, the song is, is called Day by Day, but even in the first line, it says not just day by day, but every passing moment, we recognize that we find our strength in Jesus Christ uh, through every trial. So keep that in mind as we uh, look at our message today, as we go through our message. But before we get into that, uh, let me go over the prayer requests and uh, some announcements this morning. Please pray for Belen DeSalvo and her family. Her mother's mother passed away in Ecuador, and um, her mother and, and father are not able to go back to Ecuador because uh, airlines have shut down and things like that. They can't get back. so. Please pray for them as they uh, uh, wait this out and uh, give, pray that God will give them comfort and peace during this time. Also pray for our upcoming evangelistic meetings with uh, Brother Ken Lynch. Uh, we haven't canceled those. Uh, that will begin on April 12th, Easter Sunday. And uh, I'll try to get, if we don't, if we're not able to meet back here on uh, that Sunday, I'll have something online. Uh, with Brother Lynch. Uh, keep praying for the uh, continuing situation concerning the coronavirus and uh, pray for the medical workers, people who have the virus and uh, those who may get the virus. Uh, just pray that that'll uh, end soon. Uh, some of the upcoming events, uh, we talked about uh, Brother Ken Lynch, but uh, remember this, this month, March, is our Faith Promise uh, month, and we normally have a Faith, Faith Promise Sunday on uh, the last Sunday of the month, but we're going to have to postpone that. Uh, but don't stop giving uh, to the missionaries. Uh, we, they, they, they need our support continuously, so please uh, keep that in mind as you, as you continue to give. Uh, for your regular giving, 
uh, to the support of the church, uh, I think I've already texted all of you about that and where you can send that uh, for uh, support of the church. Uh, if you didn't get the information, uh, please call me and I'll make sure you get that. I believe I sent it out to everybody, but uh, uh, some I might have missed somebody, but please call me and I'll let you know what to do. Also, for those of you who had uh, kids who were going to, planning on going to camp um, this summer, I've uh, texted you also about uh, how to do that online. We will not have a registration Sunday like we normally would in the last few years, uh, but you'll still be able to get the discount if you go to that uh, site online and register your child. Uh, and I know that this is a, might be a, a hardship for some people and you might not be able to send your kids to camp just because of the uh, conditions that the uh, state and the country are in right now. But uh, if you can and you'd like to, uh, please uh, go to that website and uh, register your, your children. All right, let's uh, go over our memory verse for this, this month, and that is Psalm 86, 15. Now let's uh, say that together. Psalm 86, 15. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. Psalm 86, 15. Let's turn our Bibles to our Bible reading this morning, and that is found now in Esther, the book of Esther. We begin Esther chapter 1. Esther chapter 1. Follow along as I read. I'll read the complete chapter and uh, go through that. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus, which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over an hundred and seven and twenty provinces, that in those days, when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even an hundred and fourscore days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace, where were white, green, and blue hangings, fastened with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rings and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble. And they gave them drink in vessels of gold, the vessels being diverse one from another, and royal wine in abundance according to the state of the king. And the drinking was according to the law. None did compel, for so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Also Vashti, the queen, made a feast for the women in the royal house, which belonged to King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Biztha, Harbona, Bigtha, and Abagtha, Zethar, and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king, to bring Vashti, the queen, before the king with the crown royal, to show the people and the princes her beauty for she was fair to look on. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. Then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment, and the next unto him was Karshena, Shethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Meres, Marsena, and Memucan, the seven princes of Persia and Media which saw the king's face, and which sat the first in the kingdom. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to the law, because she hath not performed the commandment of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlains? And Memucan answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes, and to all the people that are in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus. 
for this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes. When it shall be reported, the king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes which have heard of the deed of the queen. Thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered, that Vashti come no more before king Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to great and small. And the saying pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Mimucan. For he sent letters into all the king's provinces, into every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. Let's pray. Father, again we come to you in a different condition, in a, a place where we cannot meet together. I pray that you would help us to keep in mind the desire you have for us to keep in contact with you. Lord, we pray, we speak to you, we hear from you as we study your word, as we read your word. I pray that you would work in each heart. I pray that you would keep us safe. Uh, Lord, that we haven't had uh, this uh, virus in our midst, uh, but we know that it can happen. And I pray that uh, it either won't happen or it will go through quickly and uh, you would uh, spare us. I pray, Lord, that you would guide us now as we look to your word. I pray that you would speak to us and help us to understand uh, what you want us to know and how you want us to live and how you want us to recognize that this life should be a, a life uh, that is abundant living that Jesus Christ told us about. We ask for your guidance now. I uh, thank you for being with us even though we're separated physically from one for an, from another. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Before we begin our message today, we have a special uh, by uh, Tim and Amy and the family.
Appreciate your efforts and your help in uh, uh, bringing that song for us. Today I want us to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and we'll read verses 1 through 5. I want us to see today as we uh, not only consider the uh, events of this world today, uh, but every day that as we live, we want to look at this life and this life is this living this physical life of ours is more than just uh, living day by day until we die uh, it is uh, it is a, a, a life that if we will live the way God wants us to we will recognize that it's his life living through us remember as Paul said in Galatians chapter 2 in verse 20 he says I am crucified with Christ. And that means he, he died with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of a God who loved me and gave himself for me. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 And when we look at, think about life, remember what Jesus said. He said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Look at uh, verses 1 through 5. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ who in presence am base among you, but being absent am bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now I want you to notice the, the difference between the end of verse number 2 and the beginning of verse number 3. The end of verse number 2 says um, the people are are acting or seeing Paul and his his helpers he says they think of us as if we walked according to the flesh okay the difference being according to the flesh the second verse verse number three it says for though we walk in the flesh the two things one is according to the flesh and one is walking in the flesh yes we have a physical life we walk in this flesh Jesus Christ walked in the flesh he, was not, he did not live according to the flesh, but he walked in the flesh. He was alive, and he had physical life, and he walked this earth just like we do. So to live without the spiritual life in Christ is living only according to the flesh. Yes, in the flesh, but according to the flesh, without spiritual life. With spiritual life, we are walking in the flesh, 
but we can walk not according to the flesh. And so we recognize we have a spiritual walk, a spiritual life when we know Christ as our Savior. But this life is going to end. One day this life on earth is gone and either we will die or we'll be raptured. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen individually, but we know this particular life is going to end. So we need to look ahead, ahead and recognize that eternity is before us, not just a future in this life, but eternity. Go over to John chapter 4. We want to see today that that a real life, real life that God wants us to have is spiritual life. Look at John chapter 4. And Jesus here, as he's, as he's talking, he's talking to the woman at the well, we call the Samaritan woman. And he says this in verse number 24. He says, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is spirit. And so if God is spirit, then we, if we're going to live in a way that is pleasing to him, we need to live a spiritual life, not just a, uh, not just a life in the flesh or of the flesh, according to uh, the flesh. In John chapter 6, in verse number 63, Jesus told the people, he said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And so if Jesus was speaking, he was telling them a lot of things and some things were hard to take, but he was saying, I'm talking to you spiritually. And if we are not going to um, understand his spiritual teaching, we're not going to grow. We're not going to grow spiritually. We're, we're not going to be useful to God in many ways. Um, we're going to miss out. If we uh, only focus on this life, having dreams about the future, uh, hopes that we have, um, uh, ambitions in this life, we, we are going to miss out on a close spiritual relationship with Jesus Christ. And so we must focus on what God wants us to recognize as real life. Go over to John, I'm sorry, Luke uh, chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. And look at verse number 15. Verse number 15, and he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Life isn't about what I can get. Life isn't about things that I can get, physical things in this world. There's more to life than the things of this world. And he tells a story of a rich man who who pulled down his barns and built more, more barns and uh, because he, was, he had such a great um, harvest. And that night he, he went to bed and he's thinking, wow, I'm, I, I got it made. And that night God said he was a fool because tonight you're going to die. And then who's going to get all this stu stuff that you have? And uh, so Jesus points out, you know, this life is not all there is. But God does want us to have an abundant life. Remember what Jesus said, that they who have, have this real life will have it abundantly. And, and it's not an abundance of things, it's an abundant spiritual life when we recognize who God is and what he has done for us. We walk in the flesh, but God wants us to be rich in him not rich in the world, not rich in things. So if we're going to be rich toward God, uh, we need to be spiritually rich because God is spirit. 
Now I want to look at, at, at this life and, and, and give you a recipe. I, I call it a re the recipe of life and I, I there's two parts to it. <laughs> there's a, we have a, uh, Jerry and I have been uh, eating better than we have for a while and uh, uh, we have somebody made up a, what is called a uh, two ingredient dough and it's uh, made up of Greek yogurt and flour. That's it. And it's really good. It makes some good good bread uh, that we can that we eat, and I enjoy it. I think Jerry does too. But uh, now that's just physical stuff. But here we have two ingredients that are spiritually uh, spiritual ingredients for a great spiritual life. And number one, it's the Word of God, and number two, it's faith in Christ. If you have one without the other. Uh, you're not going to have an abundant life. So you can you can have Christ, but if you don't get to know Christ through His Word, uh, you're not going to grow like God wants you to grow. If you study the Bible and read the Bible, but never put your faith in Christ, you're nothing. And even the future uh, of eternity is very bleak, and it's, it's it's not something to look forward to, because it's eternity without God. It's eternity in a lake of fire without Jesus Christ. Go over to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Peter tells us, in a sense, these two ingredients for an abundant life. 1 Peter chapter 2, look at verse number 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively or living stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded or shall not be ashamed as we see in uh, what Paul tells us. So here he's, he's given us we need to desire the milk of the word and by believing in Jesus Christ that is possible. We will be built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood and we'll be able to offer up spiritual sacrifices unto God who is spirit. We can't have a real good life without Jesus Christ, without the Word of God. Go over to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 1. Now, in Sunday school, or if you watched the video on Sunday school, we talked about the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. And as most of you know, that they got to a place called Kadesh Barnea, and uh, God said you cannot go into the land because they turned away from him and they did not believe him. Uh, they were fearful of the, the people in the land of Canaan. And so God says, well, I'm not going to let you go in then because you're not believing me. I said I would go with you and take care of you, but you don't believe me, so you're going to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. That's what he's talking about here in this passage, Hebrews chapter 4. Look at verse 1. Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into its rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached. Now, now, I want you to pay attention to what he's saying here. He's talking about going into this land of Canaan, and that was the rest that he's talking about. And for us, uh, we should enter into the rest of God that he has provided. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So this is what he's leading into. 
So he says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. Talking about the people of, of Israel. But the word preached to them did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So they heard what God said. They heard that, that he was going to be with them and lead them into the promised land. They heard all that God said, but they rejected him. They said, I'm too scared. They did not believe. So they heard the word, and it was a good word. It was a, it was a God saying, I'm going to be with you. But they did not believe, so it wasn't mixed with faith. Have you ever had somebody give you a, a recipe, and they say, yeah, all you have to do is this, 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 and it's, oh, it's, it's great. And so you go home, and you go do this, 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 and it turns out bad, and you wonder what's wrong. They said that's all, the, all it was to it. And then you find out later, it should have been this, 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 and this, and they, fit, they left one out, and, you, and it turns out bad. Can you also imagine uh, uh, this two-ingredient dough that I said? Uh, the gr Greek yogurt and the flour. And he just put them, plop them both down on the baking sheet and stick them in the oven without mixing them together. Are you going to get bread? No. And so God says, you, you, you hear the truth, you hear the word of God, well, it's got to be absorbed and mixed in with the faith in God. So you hear that in people, this happens to people today, they hear the truth of the gospel. Jesus died for our sins paid the penalty for our sins, and all they have to do is believe, accept it. And they hear it, but they don't mix it with faith. And they don't believe. And there's, it does them no good. And so these people that he's talking about here did not go in to the promised land. Peter said we need to desire uh, the sincere milk of the word. He tells us to stop doing all these things, uh, this uh, the things that he, he told us in there in, verse, in uh, verse number one back in First Peter 2. He says, stop doing those things. Stop doing those evil actions, uh, what we shouldn't do. But he tells us that we should listen to God because God's going to give us the instructions on what he approves of and what he does not approve of. So the word of God is number one. And then Peter goes on to say, he that believeth on him will not be confounded or will not be ashamed. Go over to Romans chapter 9. Paul says this too, but he, he uses the word ashamed, which um, makes more sense to us than confounded, but they're, they're both meaning the same thing. Romans chapter 9 and verse number 33. As it is written... Behold, I lay in Sion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Have you ever tripped over a, a rock? You're walking on a creek or walking even on the, on the sidewalk. And if you're not watching, you hit a crack and you trip and you fall over and you stumble and uh, uh, you're embarrassed, right? You're ashamed that you didn't look and see it right. But here it says if it, he calls Christ a stumbling stone and a rock of offense those are the, those are what people stumble on but if you believe on him you won't stumble and you're not going to be ashamed and that's kind of the picture i get here where he says and whosoever believeth on him is not going to stumble over him is not going to be ashamed that they made a mistake we believe on the lord jesus christ and we're saved and we're there's no reason to be ashamed the problem with people not having the real life is not that they don't have the directions. Recipes are great as long as you follow the directions and the directions are right. God's directions are perfect. And so as we hear God, uh, the problem isn't because he gave us bad directions or no directions. The problem is that people don't follow the, the directions, the instructions. Um, we need to mix his word with faith. Hear the word of God and believe on him by faith. Go back to Hebrews again. Hebrews chapter 3.
Hebrews chapter 3, and look at verse number 15. I'm going to start it. Verse number 15 and go down to verse number 19. He says, While it is said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. That's what he's talking about from what I was talking about, Kadesh Barnea, and that was the provocation. They provoked God, and he made them wander in the wilderness. Don't harden your hearts like they did. He says, For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. He says, don't harden your hearts. Don't harden your hearts. Uh, they didn't believe because their hearts were hardened. Their hearts were, were focused on the wrong things. Their, their hearts were not focused on God, God's provision, God's directions, God's help. And they were not focused on who God is. They weren't focused on God's love. They, they turned their, their minds and their hearts into stone against God. They were hardened. A hard heart, though, can be overcome by Jesus Christ. A hard heart can be uh, softened by God. Go over to 1 Peter again, chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. In verse number 4, it says, To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. That's talking about Christ. A, a living stone, okay? Uh, a rock, Jesus Christ, our rock. Go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul uh, speaks there and he gives a little instruction concerning the children of Israel uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And he says, beginning at verse number one, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They weren't baptized in water, or they were baptized in the, in the event. They were with Moses, and they went through this, these uh, events together, okay, baptized with Moses. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? And did all drink the same spiritual drink? Now he's talking spiritually here. Now, yes, they needed water. They needed the meat uh, in the wilderness physically. But he said they were growing. They were supposed to be learning spiritually at the same time. Uh, it says they all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock. That rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. They were overthrown. You can be overthrown or overcome, I believe, in two ways. Number one, some of them were overthrown by being destroyed. God uh, did not allow them to live as they went through the wilderness. Some, when they were wandering he actually killed them on the spot because uh, they disregarded his word and disregarded his man and, and went against Moses um, remember we read in in Hebrews 3 verse 17 it says whose carcasses fell in the wilderness and so sometimes God destroys uh, people who uh, will not turn they harden their hearts and uh, harden their necks as the Bible puts it until there's no remedy and uh, so we can we can be overcome uh, by being destroyed or we can be overcome through surrender to God to surrender to God and uh, we surrender when our heart is is softened by God and and 
both Christians and unsaved people can be hardened, can have, allow our hearts to be crusted over with a, uh, what we would think is in, impenetrable, penetrable uh, uh, surface. I'm not going to let God uh, change my heart. Uh, people without Christ, they, they have hard hearts, and if, if God doesn't soften their heart, they never come to faith in Christ. And we as Christians can allow ourselves to be that way. Uh, the children of Israel are good uh, examples of that. They were God's chosen people. And uh, they had hard hearts. He called them stiff-necked. And uh, they were to be softened. And God had to soften some of them in the wilderness. He kept some soft as they grew up. But some whose hearts were hardened, he allowed them to, to die in the wilderness. So we need to surrender to God. And we surrender when our heart is softened by God to receive his word, the word that is preached to us, so that we can exercise faith in God, faith in Christ. A hard heart won't allow that, so God has to soften it. Um, go over to Romans uh, chapter 10 and see what, uh, what Paul says here. Romans chapter 10. Remember... Uh, in Hebrews 4, it said the word preached, this gospel that was preached to them, did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17. So then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So we have the two ingredients there, the Word of God and faith. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. Faith comes by recognizing God speaking through His Word and giving us the, the instructions, the directions uh, on how to gain eternal life and how to gain an abundant life in this life now. We put our faith in Christ, and then we learn from God's Word. First, we have to hear God's Word that tells us to have faith. Then we put our faith in Christ, and then it gets mixed up and mixed around, and we, we grow spiritually through God's Word and uh, grow to be stronger Christians spiritually. Look at verse number 10 right here in chapter 10. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so it's right here the heart we must recognize uh, we need to have a soft heart so we need to see as my heart hard my heart hardened now am i closing my ears and my mind to god speaking to me i need to be open and listen if we forget about God's word, you know, we, we, we get involved with this life and we walk uh, according to the flesh, not just in the flesh. We are flesh. We're made up of flesh and we walk in the flesh. But sometimes if we walk according to the flesh, we kind of forget about God and what he wants us to do. And so if we forget about that, we might stay away from church once in a while. Well, eventually it's not at all. We've seen it. I've only been here in this church 19 years, and, and we've seen people come and go, and they come for a while when things are good, or even when things are bad, and, and then when things start to get good, they stop coming, and they forget about coming to church. Oh, they still use the words. You'll, you'll talk to them sometimes, and they'll, they'll say, oh yeah, God's done this for me and that for me, but uh, they're really uh, hardened to listen uh, to what God says anymore. And the longer we allow our heart to be hardened over or crusted over, uh, the harder it is for us to come back. God's not going to come along with a sledgehammer and break your heart open to get you to understand and listen. He works on us to soften our hearts so that our hearts can be easily opened up. And we open it up to him. We allow him to come in. And, and work on our hearts. Go over to Acts chapter 16. In Acts chapter 16, you see 
where Paul and, and uh, Silas and the people who were with him went to uh, the city of uh, Philippi. And uh, as they went there to, to minister, they spoke at the riverside uh, to the, where the women came together. Look at verse number 14. Acts chapter 16 and verse number 14. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And so, the, so Lydia accepted Christ, and, and she was baptized, the next verse says. Here, notice, first of all, uh, it says God opened her heart. But before it says that, it says she worshiped God. See, she was already searching. God had her, her heart softened up so that when Paul came with, the, with the, the details of the gospel and that Jesus Christ paid the penalty of sin, then she was ready. She opened her heart, or God opened her heart at that time. Uh, we see uh, Paul himself uh, on the road to Damascus and, and in, uh, in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 9, and, God, and Paul calls out and says, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said to him, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And what I see in that, and I think uh, most people do see that, the, the pricks, the, the things that are coming at his heart. Paul, or Saul at that time, when he was just Saul of Tarsus, um, he, was, he was persecuting Christians. And I personally believe that as he persecuted them and took them to be put to death or put into prison, he saw them living by their faith. And I believe this pricked his heart. It, it prodded him in saying, something's different here. These aren't just people who are, are uh, believing some weird thing. There's something different about them and their faith. And I believe that's what God, what Christ was talking about when he said, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. Paul was saying, uh, put it out of his mind. I have to do this. This is my job. This is what I'm doing for God. And so he continued to do it. But uh, in the back of his mind, there was something there. And I believe that's what was softening his heart. And so when Christ came to him on the road to Damascus, he was ready. And he says, who art thou, Lord? Not, not only who art thou, but what wilt thou have me to do? He submitted to Christ and said, okay, you are uh, in charge now, not me. And I'm going to do as you, um, as you say. So there are people today that who, are, who have hardened hearts. Uh, and, and some of them may still seem hardened like Paul. Paul was going after those Christians. And from the outside, it looked like he had a hardened heart. But when, when he was softened and God uh, saved him uh, to other people, remember when he talked to Ananias, he said, I want, God said, I want you to go to, to talk to Paul. He's over here at this person's house, and, or Saul, and talk to him. And he says, well, wait a minute. He's the one who's going around uh, arresting Christians. And uh, from his standpoint, from Ananias' standpoint, Paul still had a hard heart. But it was softened and opened by God, and now it was changed. And so Ananias could go to him, and uh, uh, Paul responded. So there are people who, on the outside, still seem hardened. But we can't let that affect us. I can't let that stop us from uh, going to them and giving them the gospel. And yes, they might reject outwardly, verbally, but God does in their heart what he wants, wants to happen. And so we leave it with him and let them come to faith in Christ. God's working on many people, softening their heart. We just don't, we just don't see it. We can't see it and we're not going to see it. We do his work reaching them with the gospel, preaching to them so that our preaching the word of God will mix with the faith that they will have in Christ and they will grow uh, spiritually. They will come to faith in Christ, have eternal life, and they will have a, an abundant life as they serve the Lord, as they work for God. Has God been softening your heart? Maybe you're a Christian and you're 
you're uh, closed minded. Maybe you're sitting at home and looking at this on the on the internet, and uh, maybe you found it by chance. I don't know, but if you are uh, hardened heart, you're you may be being softened by God, and you need to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus died to pay the penalty of our sin. We should pay our own penalty, but God said you you can't pay for it. It's too big a price. So He had Jesus Christ pay for it. God in the flesh came and died for us to pay our penalty. Christian, are, is your heart being crusted over today? Are you slowly walking away from God? You should turn around and walk back toward Him. Let Him soften your heart today so that you can have a, a day by day walk with God, growing spiritually, having an abundant life, a real Christian life, not just in name, not just in word, but a real close relationship with Jesus Christ. Allow him to work on you today to grow you to be more like Christ. Let's pray. Father, again, I thank you for being with us. Thank you for helping us, showing us your word, giving us your word. Thank you for making it clear to us, and I pray that I have made it clear of what you're doing in our lives, how you want us to have an abundant life. And Lord, even daily, we should be living by faith. We should listen to the word of God, believe it, have faith in it, act upon it because of our faith. And Lord, we can have an abundant spiritual life, walking with you, uh, enjoying our life, even as, as James put it, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations or trials. We can be joyful knowing that you're working in our lives to grow us. And Lord, we, we, because of our faith, we recognize it. Help us to uh, enjoy this life that you've given to us, knowing that the eternal life to come is even better than this. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.